Hello and welcome to another episode of Ezoic Explains. I'm Whitney Wright, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the Chrome UX dashboard on Data Studios to track an origin user experience. If you're unfamiliar with Data Studio, it is a data visualization tool that allows you to create dashboards on top of large data sources, such as the Chrome UX report. The Chrome UX report dashboard is built with Data Studio through a feature called Community Connectors, which is a pre-established link between the raw Chrome UX report data on BigQuery, a serverless data warehouse, and the visualization of Data Studio. Community Connectors takes away any need for dashboard users to write queries or generate charts. To get started, go to g.co backslash Chrome UX dash. Here on the Community Connector page, you can provide an origin that the dashboard will be created for. First time users will need to complete permissions or marketing prompts, which will appear on the screen first. You have to use an origin and not a full URL. In this example, we will be using https colon backslash backslash www.ezoic.com. We could not, however, use www.ezoic.com backslash blog. If you do so, you will get this community connector error page. Some important tips to know when entering in the origin is that if you do not include the protocol, HTTPS is automatically used. Also, if you have a subdomain that you're wanting to use, it matters that you enter the subdomain URL and not just the original domain. To troubleshoot some of the errors, try using a different protocol, such as HTTPS instead of HTTP, or considering any redirects you may have. If ezoic.com redirects to www.ezoic.com, then use www.ezoic.com since it is the canonical version of the origin. Sometimes you may need to not use the subdomain if it won't work. While there are over 4 million origins in the data set, yours may not be included because there is a lack of sufficient data. If your origin does exist, then you'll be redirected to the schema page of the dashboard, which shows you all of the fields included. From here, click Create Report. There are three types of pages included in each dashboard, a core web metrics overview, metric performance, and user demographic. Each of these pages shows a chart showing distributions over time for each monthly release of data. Whenever new data sets are available, you can simply refresh the dashboard to get the new data. Monthly data sets are released on the second Tuesday of every month for the previous month. So if you're looking for the data set for June, you would have to wait till the second Tuesday of July. The first page is an overview of the core web vitals, which Google has announced are the most important metrics to focus on. We have largest contentful paint, first input delay, and cumulative layout shift. You can use the core web vitals to understand how the origin is experienced by desktop and phone users. Tablet is excluded by default, but you can remove the no tablet filter on the side here if you'd like to see it. After the core web vitals page, you will see individual pages for each metric in the Chrome UX dataset. You can click through each of these to dig deeper into the origin's metrics. Don't be alarmed if on each page it says no data. This is simply because the previous month's release is not available until the second Tuesday of each month. There is also a device filter at the top of each page in case you want to segment out each device. What is important to note here on the pages are the experiences each month labeled as good, needs improvement, and poor, which are color coded with green, yellow, and red. You can compare month over month for how each metric is performing. For core web vitals that show percentile recommendations, there will also be the P75 metric between good and poor percentages. This value means that 75% of experiences are better than this value. This is for all devices and can't be segmented by specific devices. After the web metrics pages of the report are the user demographic pages, of which there are two dimensions, devices and effective connection types, or ECTs. These pages show the distribution of pages across the entire origin for users in each demographic. The first page, device distribution, shows phone, desktop, and tablet users over time. These 0% on the side refer to tablet, which a lot of origins don't have data on. The connection distribution page shows how users with different connections, 4G, 3G, 2G, slow 2G, and offline, experience the origin. And that's it for this episode of Ezoic Explains. I hope that this helped you understand how you can quickly look at data from BigQuery with simple and instantaneous visualization of your origin user experience trends. If you like this video, you can subscribe. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. Uh, ezoic.com. We have a blog at ezoic.com slash blog. Please subscribe to this channel and subscribe to this playlist if you enjoyed it. This has been another episode of Ezoic Explains.